Good morning, everybody. It's the 2nd of April, and it's a red day, and people are freaking out. I'm going to give you some perspective as to where we are and what is going on, because a lot of people are very concerned. They're saying, why aren't we on the moon already? But I'll also unlock a few new things today as well. First of all, we will show a brand new indicator, which shows you exactly where we are and why it is actually a historical day. Um, we'll also talk about how the grayscale sell-off is actually inconsequential. And we'll see if BlackRock is actually watching what's going on. Crazy, crazy good time to be alive. Anyway, despite the red day, let's jump in. And, uh, oh yeah, this video is entitled, Single Player Buys It All. So let's go and shout out to Patreon as well. We have Obsession Addicted, new Patreon sub here. Hello from PA. Hello, PA. I spent quite a bit of time in Philly back in the day. So I know exactly where you are. And there's a Bitcoin only playlist here. If you just want Bitcoin only content, by the way, it's a two for a day. I'll be doing Okta later today in about three or four hours. And having clock 17 days and it's red and people are vexed. What's going on? Shouldn't we be on the moon? Well, let's explain what's going on. First of all, we do have the CME gap, which uh, for those of you who don't know, the, the CME is a Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And the gap refers to the difference of price between the closing price on a given trading day and the opening price on the following trading day. And especially after a long Easter weekend, things can get a little bit out of whack. And the gap arises because the crypto market is 24-7, as you know, and traditional markets like CME are closed on the weekends and on holidays. And as a result, when the CME opens on Monday... And Tuesday, the price of Bitcoin sometimes gaps up or down, and we have this big nasty gap, which the good news is, is more or less closed. We had a 66k support yesterday that broke through, and we fell all the way down to 64k. The CME gap there is around 60, let's check it out, 65.5, give or take 64.1. So as far as I'm concerned, the gap is closed, and... The manipulation is done. The leverage longs are flushed. All the usual stuff. It's like, I think I said the same thing a week ago, but I don't remember. Let's jump on and look at something else happening, which is quite interesting. Per this chart from the team at CryptoQuant, the net position of new investor supply compared to that of old ones is increasing and currently exceeds 1 million Bitcoin. This is strong demand from these new short-termers that just jumped in. And you know what this is called? This is called pre-having FOMO. The folks that forgot to fill their bags a year ago are coming in now, which is great, which will support. But we'll talk about some other support that's coming from places that you may not be aware of as well. So lots of fun things happening. Also, uh, a moment of silence for... The heavy leverage longs, half a billion dollars lost in the last 24 hours. But that's just a typical day in crypto. <laughs> Degens will degen, and that's just how it works. Now, another absolutely crazy news, which is why we Bitcoin this debt. This is the US debt clock. And by the way, when I speak about the US debt clock, same thing is happening in Europe, same thing is happening in Australia and Brazil and all over the place, United Kingdom. But this is nuts. We added, the US did, not me, added $1.62 trillion in a little over a couple of weeks. $1.62 trillion. Soon, probably in a matter of days, we're going to hit $35 trillion in debt. It is just accelerating. I wish this could be a stock. It would be worth buying. Unfortunately, it's fiat, so you got to think of it as the inverse. Your melting ice cube is melting ever faster. And a shout out to Vivek and Robert Breedlove. Breedlove said this in a very good interview. He said, we printed, this is the US Fed, printed $6 trillion in 2020. The average US salary is $60,000. That is 100 million years stolen. Okay, now... A lot of people are always looking for little anecdotes to explain to loved ones why Bitcoin. There's the 175th example of why Bitcoin, okay? And crazy stuff is happening. This is Gary Cardone, and this is flying around Twitter today. 
Uh, he is the twin brother of a renowned business person and real estate investor, Grant Cardone, and they have a huge background in the real estate industry. Uh, and I think Gary is a seed investor in his brother's real estate company, which owns or one of the largest holders of multi-dwelling real estate in the United States. What's crazy about this, he sold his $2.5 million house to buy Bitcoin. Now, there was a time in my life where I believed in kind of a three-legged stool, and everybody does need a castle. But now, if you can flip it fast and get in and invest in Bitcoin without any friction, and then come back to real estate later, it's fine. Or rent, because I also say now things are moving towards the whole gig economy, gig jobs, gig places to live. Everything will be much more short-term in duration. And that was kind of fascinating. So two and a half million dollar bag, not bad. We'll see how he does. Um, next, in the box, speaking of other assets, traditional assets like real estate and gold, this is a beautiful chart from the team at Equinometrics. And you can see gold is making a new all-time high. But Bitcoin is almost back at its all-time high against gold. And there's nothing wrong with gold. But if you want alpha, you want return, <laughs> there's only one clear choice. And that is Bitcoin. It absolutely smashes gold in a big way. So again, for your gold bug friends, share that chart. It might upset them. Um, now, let's talk about some of the ETF numbers and then talk about a couple of cool charts, which are super interesting to look at. I'll fly through this real quick because yesterday was a dumpage day. Again, we go into a darker red down the bottom right. Grayscale, 300 million. Boom, dumped again. And that is not bad. That screenshot is the wrong screenshot. It is not. I need to slow, slide it over to the right a little bit. Anyway, there was a big dump. Uh, here you get a better perspective of the, the This screenshot is correct. The green is grayscale. The red is BlackRock. The BlackRock intake was not enough to offset grayscale dumpage, which was, again, about $300 million, which is similar to exactly two days ago, two previous trading days ago. And we were kind of hoping last trading day, I think was Thursday, it was only $100 million of dumpage, $300 million the day before, but now we're back to $300 million. This thing is just bleeding out like it's taken every surprise. Even the management team at Grayscale are like, uh oh, we got a problem. This 150 basis points of fees is not working out. So, but I think it's just mostly speculators in that vehicle anyway. I don't think it's the fees that are chasing people out. Anyhow, the money flow did turn negative again. Nasty dip. You can see there. Again, this is 55 days. And there's not many days that we fall under that zero line where money turns negative. It's a handful. It's about. I think 12 or 13% of days are negative. But it's normally followed by a big update. So we'll watch this carefully. To give you perspective on how negative it was, that's that little blue box below the line there. Not too bad, but money flow is peaking down. We did it have a very strong three days last week. And if you look at the history of negative days, the worst ones were day 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. All because of massive... DCG Genesis GBTC dumpage, which wasn't enough to... The other ETFs weren't enough to buy all of that sell pressure. But wait, wait, there's some funny news coming. Now, you can see here, money flow down, 85.7 million down, negative. But still, the trend is up. Despite 55 days being in, that little green line that looks horizontal, it actually is sloping up ever so slightly which is a good thing for us uh, in terms of the money. It was 24.5 billion. Now it's only 24.2 billion into the nine new ETFs. And the amount of drainage from Grayscale is phenomenal. Almost 300,000 Bitcoin now, which is stunning, which is basically half their bag. And that has more than been absorbed by the new players that have sucked in 483,300 Bitcoin in 55 days, nearly half a million nearly 10,000 Bitcoin a day into these new vehicles, which is stunning. Let's look at the grayscale dumpage too. The pink line is trend. We are now worse than the trend at a negative 302.6 yesterday. Will that continue today? I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out this afternoon. Follow me to make sure you know. Now, what's crazy about this, though, the really interesting perspective, is the amount 
taken or put back into the system. And I always say taken out of the system. But 1,230 Bitcoin were flushed back into the system yesterday from that negative $85 million. But you know what's really crazy? Get this. Mr. 100 bought more than that negative delta yesterday, more than that grayscale dump. One player, one single player snags up more than all of this grayscale dumpage um, and net, of, of course, inflows too. So it is super interesting to see. Mr. 100 bought 1,256 Bitcoin in the last 36 hours. They're back to 100s. There was a time where they were buying 20s and 30s and 47s and everything else, but now they got back onto that cadence of 100. Boom, 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 boom. What's also interesting, most of the buys came in heavy at a Bitcoin price under 66,000. So they've been buying the dip heavily and they're beginning to get much better at that. They used to just buy 100 Bitcoin willy-nilly every single day. Now they're going in hard, pre-having to make sure they snag. And when Bitcoin falls under 66, these folks buy hard and they more than up offset the dumpage. One player, the dumpage from all the ETFs and Grayscale, which is crazy. Now, two quick charts to look at. First of all, we're looking at mean reversion here and it is a nasty dip. We haven't seen mean reversion go this negative. Uh, the last time we had a really negative dip was March 4th. And now we are down further, over one standard deviation away from the mean on the 30-minute chart on Binance, on Bitcoin. That means, everybody, this will be short-lived. We are going back up because that's what this model tells you. It'll go up above the red and it'll fall back below the green. When it's below the green, it's in the kill zone. That's when you buy. When it's above the red, if you want to play a swift little trade, that's when you sell. Everything mean reverts. It's the law of nature. That's what this model tells you here. And another fun news too, a little bit of pre-having, it's not per-having, pre-having dip, excuse the typo, the green buttons or the history, 2017. We had a pretty nasty pre-having dip where the price fell. And shout out to El Crypto Prof, his chart. Uh, the blue line is the one you got to focus on. In 2020, we didn't dip below the blue line. And in 2024, we haven't gone close. In fact, a lot of the data this time around is very different. But the point is, after the halving, ladies and gentlemen, that's when things go bonkers. That's when the dips are no longer in play. Crazy, crazy, crazy perspective. And every many of the on-chain metrics now are telling you things that you know, because it's so early and we're so high and the data is different because there are different players buying, it's hard to make sense of what is going on. But one thing I can tell you is when you have one player on the planet buying such an amount, which is more than one and a half times the issuance, by the way, less than 20% of what is mined now by Bitcoin miners around the planet is hitting the markets. Okay? So... That's about what, 180 Bitcoin a day. And you got a player like Mr. 100 buying 1,256 in 36 hours. Simply not enough to go around. With that, everybody, see you all in a couple of hours. Thank you all for coming. Thank you to the mods in the chat. Have a great Tuesday. It's 2nd of April. And we, what's even more crazy, what, 17 days to go? That's not a lot of time. Anyway, thanks all for coming. See you all later. And, uh, have a good day. Bye.